Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Shamir, and if you're a returning subscriber, thanks for joining me again today. So today, we're going to be talking about the Where is Wendy Williams documentary. You guys, I was so ready to watch this documentary and tell you all about it. I'm not gonna lie to you. There was a moment once I watched some of the, like, preview clips for the documentary where I was just like, this looks like it's gonna be sad. It looks like it's gonna have me emotional, and I don't know if I want to watch, okay? That's honestly where I was. I had had to really talk to myself over the past couple days to decide whether I even wanted to do this review or not but since I did review the Wendy Williams movie and her first documentary that was on Lifetime I was like you know what the girls and guys have to know what's going on with Wendy and how I feel about it <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and watch and show you guys or tell you guys what happened I just really wanted to jump through the TV a couple times when this first started so we started off seeing um Wendy preparing herself to promote the podcast that she wanted to start now this is all starting around 2022 okay and in 2022 the Supreme Court of New York place Wendy under like a financial guardianship and they said like it had to be reviewed every year and so this is where we're really starting okay so early on I was like looking a little side eye at a few people that were around Wendy okay mainly Mr. Will okay we'll get into it Will is Wendy's manager and you know early on I was kind of like hmm you know I didn't really just full on be like oh, okay I don't know about him but early on I was just like I don't know Let, let's see where this goes okay let's see where this goes there was a moment where Wendy started crying about her lymphedema and I felt so bad for her like she showed her feet and was like looked down and when I say it looked like the most painful thing I just was just like that just seems like a lot to go through and deal with okay so and I could just see then that Wendy just is so emotional and she has so much going on you know things were weird when she was talking about her sister because she was like well my sister just doesn't like alcohol so it was clear that she was basically saying okay well alcohol is gonna be in my life and the people who don't like alcohol you know that's why they're not around basically in so many words she also said that wanda wanted her to get sober and wanda is wendy's sister and i really was just like okay this is a woman who just looked like she's crying out for help because she seems like someone who just really wants to be in control of her life she seems like in my mind i feel like wendy is thinking like I'm I, like I was in so much control and I was on top and I was good and now everything is just going downhill things are spiraling and she just can't get it together okay so I feel like that's where a lot of her emotion was coming from very early on in the documentary watching her talk about her lymphedema and cry the way she was crying and just being in the state that she was in, it just really made me think back to like, man, I feel like at the level Wendy was at, okay, if she started having all these health problems and these problems with lymphedema and all of that, if the person who had a, who really said through sickness and health had a really been there for her and not had all of this other stuff go on in their lives and their marriage could have been together, I really feel like we would be seeing Wendy handle this situation in a totally different way, okay? I don't feel like the echo, like, I feel like she may have had some issues still, like, she may have still had issues with drinking and stuff like that, but I feel like if she really had her partner, the person that she loved around her and with her during those times and when she first started having to deal with her health issues I feel like she would have been able to cope better Wendy really is looking like someone who can't cope with the fact that she's not on top right now knowing how talented she is and knowing how much of a star that she is she just can't cope with like this is the reality of her life it's like a downward spiral her health is going down everything is like a problem you know so we also see Wendy go well we don't see her go away but they say that okay she went away for two months and then she comes back right when she came back like at first glance I was like okay look look she looks like she's got it together okay but then the second she started talking I was like no ma'am 
no it doesn't seem like she has it together okay it really was like almost like she was in some sort of trance and i know that um wendy has graves disease and so that makes her eyes bulge out and things like that so it wasn't just the way that she was looking it was almost like you could see past all of that it was like she was in a trance like yep because they were like, are you good? And she's like, yep, I'm good. It was almost like robotic, okay? It was it was hard to watch. Honestly, it really was hard to watch. Really, one thing I want to talk about, too, is the dynamic between Wendy and Will, who is her manager. Um, I'm sure we'll see more about their relationship in part two of the documentary. But as for part one, the, the second I saw Will... I just, I, I didn't know about him, okay? The way, like, she cried and she looked at him and she hugged him and embraced him. I was like, something is strange about this relationship. And honestly, I'm not going to spoil the whole documentary for you if you didn't see it. So I'm not going to give you every single detail of everything that happened. But you guys, at some points, I was just like, okay, now, Will, it's, it's looking very weird and very sketchy, okay? I honestly started thinking to myself, like, has Will ever slept with Wendy? Like, have they had, like, some type of sexual relationship at some point? And then I started thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I know that Wendy is in and out here, okay? She's in and out. Because... You know, between the drinking and her health issues that we now know that she has and stuff. I knew that she wasn't just always all the way there. But I feel like the moments when Wendy is all the way there, okay? She's like, I'm just gonna, in my mind, okay, in my opinion, she's like, I'm just gonna suck it up and do what I have to do to get along with this damn wheel because I need to be able to get access to my money again. I feel like in her mind, she started this process off thinking, let me just go along with the motions, make him think he's like all buddy-buddy with me so that I can do what I have to do. And honestly, it's a lot of other stuff that I want to talk about, okay, <laughs> that I'm going to talk about. But I just was like, you know, throughout the course of this documentary, the people that were working around Wendy, I'm like... Do y'all not see what's going on here? Okay, I feel like you're like, okay, let's do this photo shoot in Asbury Park and let's do this and let's do that and the podcast this and the podcast that. Wendy needs to have a seat right now. That's that's why I want to jump through the TV. I was like, clearly, you see Wendy over here drinking, barely able to keep like a whole sentence together. You see what she has going on. Why are you sitting here feeding this like to her like... Yep, it's it's gonna be simple. Like you're Wendy Williams. Yeah, yes, let's go do this photo shoot. Wendy looked like she didn't even need to get up and go do that photo shoot. Now I can understand her being bored because of the type of career she's had in her day to day. Like I'm going to work, I'm doing this TV show and all that. But it really got to the point to where I was just looking at all of them like are we looking at the same person? Are, are we not seeing the same thing? Like, no, Wendy needs to sit down right now. Wendy needs to be around her family. She needs to chill out. She needs to get her health together. It was giving um, Will and then the other lady. I don't even remember her name. She had like curly hair going on. Girl, what? She suggested we have a drink and you just right along with it. Like, yeah, like I like wine. And then she's like, well, Wendy, I feel like, you know, she can have a drink and she knows when to stop. Girl, I can see that she don't know when to stop just from watching this these clips and stuff here. What do you mean you feel like she knows when she can stop? See, I'm going to have to calm down because this is why. <laughs> this is why I go back and forth about whether I should do these reviews, okay? But honestly, you guys, honestly, if you watched it, comment down below. Let me know. Were you really thinking like... What, what are you trying to do? Okay, and honestly with Will, I was just thinking to myself, I don't know. I'm not going to say that he doesn't want Wendy to get well and do better. Because I believe he does want Wendy to get well and do better. But I feel like he wants that to happen because it'll be beneficial to him. More of a him thing than a her thing. Like, okay, I'll prove to you, look. I, I feel like he's the type of person that has like this complex and he's like, you know what? I, I, I can I can I can put her back on top. I'm gonna prove to you that I can turn her back into the Wendy she used to be. You you know, then be like, 
I told you so in the end and want his money. You get what I'm saying? Because a few times he made some comments in there. If you haven't watched this documentary, you just go ahead and watch it and you'll know what I'm saying. Because a few times he made some comments and I was just looking real side-eyed at him okay um another thing that went on was the fact that you know we started to see some clips of them talking to her nephew and her son and talking about how she was doing when she was around them and honestly when it comes to the money okay here's how I feel about this I understand that Wells Fargo may have thought to themselves like hey okay all of a sudden he's with his you know, Wendy's with her son and he's using up a lot of her money and blah, 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 blah. I hear all of that, okay? But here's how I feel when it comes to any type of financial institution and other people telling you what to do with your money that you worked hard for. I feel like it's giving a no, okay? Because at the end of the day, Wendy started out, she didn't have all those millions of dollars. She went to work, she worked her butt off and she made those millions of dollars. I don't care if she threw all that money around all day, just throwing it into the wind. She worked for it. She made it. She needs to be able to make the decisions about what she's going to do with her money. If she loses all her money, oh well, she just loses all her money. Why are you so invested in her money that she went to work for? If I go to work and I make $100 right now, um... That's, that's not your business if I decide that I'm just going to blow my $100 when I get home, okay? But because she just makes millions of dollars, you feel like, okay, now you need to take some type of control over it? Okay, no, absolutely not. And I understand, yes, her son may have been spending a lot of money, but I'm sure, like he said, his mom used to give him a lot of stuff because she was you know, using drugs and alcohol, and it was basically like, okay, well, here, this is going to make up for it. At the end of the day, what they need to realize is they're trying to say like, oh, okay, well, she's not in her right mental state, so we need to control her money. No, you don't need to control her money because I feel like at the end of the day, you know that when she is in her right mental state, she would want her son to be taken care of, okay? So to cut her son off completely financially, I, I feel like it's just absolutely ridiculous to me. Now, I can understand people making the argument, well, oh, he shouldn't be able to just blow her, his mom's money because she worked for the money. But like I said, she was taking care of her son. She was giving her son money, I'm sure. So I feel like, okay, if you don't want him to have complete control of her money, you definitely need to make sure that he has housing provided, okay? He should have something or some things, more than one place. Whatever he wants, whatever type of housing he wants, it should be provided to him. And I feel like he should be on some type of monthly allowance. And yes, I know he's grown. I know he's 21 years old. But honestly, I feel like she seems like the type of person that would still be helping her son out financially. So that's that on that. I'm sorry. I feel like, you know, the whole thing with taking celebrities' money and having other people control their money that they worked for, no. I'm sorry. If they lose it, they just lose it. Now, will that be bad for them? Yes, it will. Okay, I'm sure they feel some type of way, but I'd rather them just lose their money and feel some type of way than somebody else taking over your money. Somebody that you don't even know like that or is not even your family now controlling your life and your money because the bank felt like you was spending how you shouldn't be spending. Okay, absolutely not. Okay, absolutely not. No, I didn't like it. Some other things that were going on, we saw Wendy going out, um... Like I said, that photo shoot was just a lot. I felt like she definitely... There was a moment in there where she was crying, walking down the steps and just had to have a seat. And they were still just taking the photos. Like, let's get these photos for this, you know, promo for this podcast. And it was really sad to see. And another thing that I just didn't like about this whole section of the documentary, too, was... um. You know, okay, let's address this too, because I don't want to just skate past any of this. There were lots and lots of moments in here where we saw snippets of Wendy, you know, being rude or mean or disrespectful to people. Like, for instance, the nail tech that was come that come to the house that come to the house, the nail tech that came to the house to do her nails. Um, I feel like with them releasing a statement 
once again about her condition and what she has now it makes sense i know that a lot of people deal with things like that when they have family members who have dementia or are starting to lose their memory they honestly become frustrated and angry and combative but if you notice she would just like cry immediately after too i feel like it was just a frustrating thing and it's not like i'm trying to give wendy a pass but at the same time with that condition honestly you guys it's just something that happens and comes along with it and it just takes Ooh, it takes the right type of people to be around someone who is going through stuff like that to have empathy for them and to not just get frustrated and just wash their hands with them completely. So I know there are lots of families who are dealing with things like that and going through things like that, okay? So I just wanted to bring that up too because it's not like I'm trying to skirt past her behavior and how she was treating people. But honestly, now we know that there is a reason why she was treating people like that, you know. Um, another thing I didn't like is toward the end of part one of the documentary, there was a scene where Will goes into her room um, because she's not up yet and uh, she had been sleeping and some people were there, you know, to see about like her selling her clothes and stuff. And he told her, like, wake your ass up. That's how he said it. Like, you need to wake your ass up and all this other stuff. Well, first of all, sir, okay, Wendy is your employer. You work for her, okay? So I don't care how cool or buddy-buddy you think you are with her. At the end of the day, you're her employee. It's never okay for you to just feel like you can talk to your employer like that. See, that's how I know you feel like you can just run the show. You feel like Wendy works for you is what it's giving, okay? And I don't know this for a fact, but I feel like this man feels like Wendy works for him. Wendy needs him. She needs to fall in line. Because at, at, at no point is it ever okay for you to talk to your boss like that and tell them that. And I'm sorry. If you can't deal with what she has going on, then you might need to, you know, kick rocks and keep it moving and find you another job. Okay, I'm just saying because how many of y'all can go into your boss's office, home, or anywhere else and, and tell them what their ass needs to do? Okay, I hate to even curse, but like really, he said it, not me. Okay, <laughs> well, I mean, I said it because I repeated it, but you know what I'm saying. You don't talk to your employer like that. You just don't unless you know that you can get over on them. Okay. But anyway, you guys, I'm not going to ramble on and on anymore. I feel like I've given you all that I can give you, okay? Because in the words of Wendy Williams herself, some things are kitchen table talk. And the way this here internet works, <laughs> I can't let myself get too deep, okay? So I'm not going to share any more thoughts. That is enough. I'm sure you can get an idea of where I really stand, when it comes to Wendy and these people that are around her, um, I'm definitely waiting to see part two because I just want to see her get to be back around her family. You know, and from the clips that I saw of what's coming up on part two, it looks like she's going to be able to reunite with her family in some way, shape, or form. So I'm here for it. I definitely want to see it. Um, I'm sure I forgot a few things, but honestly, I'm tired. It's late. Um, <laughs> I am a millennial mom, okay? <laughs> I like to be in bed by this time, honestly. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know what you guys are thinking about this documentary. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.